today I'm going to talk about brushes in Photoshop, uh, creating custom brushes, sizing brushes, and some of the um, control bar features that we have up here on our brush. And the first thing I wanted to explain is just the overall brush size. Now if you're working in CS5 or earlier, there is a limit on the actual brush size that you can use and that is 2500 pixels by 2500 pixels. So if you create a shape in here, so if I paint in here and I want to create this as a brush, what you want to do is draw a marquee around that And I've got, I've basically um, chosen my rectangular marquee and I've fixed, uh, switched it to a fixed size up here and I've got 5200 by 5200 and I'm going to click. That makes my selection. All right, so then once I have my selection, I'm going to come up here and go edit. And I'm going to come down here to define brush and you'll see that for me it's grayed out. And that's because I have this set to 5200 by 5200 pixels. And it appears, the old versions, it used to be 2500 by 2500. Anything over that, you would that defined brush would be grayed out. And I am finding in CS6, it looks like they have changed that. And they are now allowing us to do a 5000 by 5000 pixel brush. All right. So if I click up here and change my selection to 5,000 by 5,000 pixels. Now when I come over here and say define brush preset, it's not grayed out. So if you're working in CS6, I'm thinking 5,000 by 5,000 is the maximum size you can do. In CS5 and below, I know CS5, CS4, 2,500 by 2,500 is the limit. So if it's grayed out, just make sure that your selection is not larger than what um, the limits are. All right, so I'm going to say define brush preset. There's going to be a dialog box come up here. I can name this. I'm going to call this, um, oh, Eric 1. I'll click OK. And then I'll click on my brush over here the keyboard shortcut is B and I'll click up here on this little preset and I'll come down here to the very bottom and you'll see down here that my brush is saved and if I hover over it it says Eric 1 and it'll actually give you the pixel dimensions 4847 by 4847 And we actually can change, by clicking on this little gear widget up here, we can actually change our display size of our brushes. Either we can say um, large list, small list, or we can just say large thumbnail. I'm going to keep it on large thumbnail so that you can actually see these things here. And right there is my new brush. So anything that you can paint in Photoshop over here, and make a selection of it, you should be able to turn it into a brush. All right, I'm going to get rid of that. The other thing I wanted to talk to you about, and there's some, a couple of ways we can do this, is sizing the brush, um, changing the actual physical size of it. So if we want a small brush or a large brush. And a lot of people will tell you to um, use the bracket keys. So you'll see as I use my right bracket key up there, my um, size of my brush gets larger. So if I click, alright, so bracket keys and then my left bracket key will size my brush down. Okay. Some of you will come over here and click and change the size. For me that's just too much going back and forth. But you can do that. So there's a really, really small brush. And we're working on a 20 inch by 20 inch document here. I kind of wanted to test the size of um, 
defining a brush in Photoshop. Let's see. There's another way that we can um, change a brush size. When we're on the brush tool, we can control click and bring up all of our brushes here, which is kind of a nice uh, way of doing it, or right click. So when you're using the brush, if you right click, you have access to all of your brushes here that you have in your presets, and you can change the um, size and the hardness of your brush. Okay, so if you take this all the way up to 100%, your brush is going to be really hard, hard edged. If I take this down to 0%, now my brush is really soft. You'll see it kind of be really dark in the center and then kind of feather out. So if I click, you'll see here now that I have a real strong center and as it goes out to the edge, it's a softer brush. My favorite way of doing this, and I think this started in CS5, is the keyboard shortcuts. Because I always have my mo my hand on my modifier keys. My left hand, if I'm since I'm a right-handed person, my left hand always hovers around Shift, Control, Option, Command, and Spacebar. All right. So for me, as I'm painting, uh, the quickest way for me to change my brush size is to hold down Control, Option, and then drag. So if I drag left and right, I can change the actual size, and you'll see there, um, it does tell us that the diameter of our brush looks like the maximum limit is 5,000 pixels. Okay, So I can control, option, drag left and right, changes the size of my brush, and if I want to change the feather of my brush, I'm going to hold down control, option, and drag up and down. So as I drag down, my brush gets really hard, hard edged, right? And if I hold down control option and drag up, you'll see this kind of soft feather occurring. And now as I click, I've got a soft brush. So that's my favorite way of um, sizing the brush. And it's real quick when you're painting. You don't have to go back and forth to the toolbar. You just uh, hold down control option drag to the left or to the right to, for sizing, and then drag up and down for the actual hardness of your brush. Now the other cool thing is with this technique and keeping your left hand down there by the modifier keys is if you hold control option, we can change the size of the brush, but if we hold down, if we add the command key, you'll see that we have a real quick color selector here. Okay. So I can come over here and kind of select the range, and as long as I'm holding down Control, Option, Command, I have access to this color picker. I pick my color and I paint. So I'm not coming over here to my uh, toolbar. I'm not going up here to my swatches. My cursor is staying right there where I'm painting, and I'm holding down Control, Option, Command, click, choose my color, paint, Control Option Command click, choose my color, paint, Control Option Command click, pick another range, slide over here, get a bright green, and paint. So that's a very handy and quick, efficient way of painting inside Photoshop. All right. So that's a couple of different ways to size your brush and choose color. Now we can come down here and double click on our um, color picker, come over here, pick a color, click OK, and paint. We can come up here and pick a color out of our swatches, and then go back and paint. But since Photoshop invented it and put it in, Control, Option, Command, Select, click, and select your color, and paint seems to be quite a bit quicker. All right, a couple of windows in when we're working with our brushes that we need to be aware of. We have a brush panel, and we have a brush presets panel.
And this brush presets panel is this same little window that you can get up here. So you can click up here and get your brush presets. And this brush panel where we um, interact with our brush and change the spacing and stuff like that, we can get to that as well by clicking on this little button. Okay. And then we have our typical um, blend modes here. So if you want to paint with some of these different blend modes, you'll get different effects depending on how you want to do it. Normal will fill it with that opaque color. We can change the opacity of our brush. We can also, let's get rid of this brush presets. We can also use our number keys at the top of our keyboard. So if you want to paint with 80% opacity, you can just tap the 8 key. If you want to type, uh, type. If you want to paint with 20% opacity, you just tap your 2 key. And that will change your opacity on the fly. So once again, we can keep our left hand as our modifier key, or modifier hand, and we can just tap those keys up there for 1% opacity, 5%, 90%. And if you want to go 51, you just have to type in 51 real quick up there. Not type in, but you need to hit your 34 real quick. That'll give you 34%, 15%. So you just want to type the 1 and the 5 real quick. 1 5, 1 5, 1 5. All right. So opacity, you can come up here and use the slider, or we can just tap the number keys. So if you tap 3, you get 30%. If you tap 0, you'll be back to 100%. Now these little icons up here are for your pressure sensitive tablets. If you use them, uh, great. I think they're great for painting. Uh, I would suggest getting them. If not, if you don't have one, you're going to just be restricted to what you um, define over here in our brush uh, window here. So the little airbrush icon over here will allow you to paint much like an airbrush would. And I don't know if any of you have used an airbrush or like a spray can of paint. And just like a spray can of paint, you know that if you click and hold that button down, it's going to just fill that area that you're holding with a big amount of paint. Okay, so as we hold, click and hold, you'll see that spray paint kind of fill in that area. All right, so those are your options. Uh, this one here is for uh, size, I think. Always use pressure for size. So if, so let me show you what a pressure sensitive um, tablet will do for you. I'm going to turn that on and I'm going to grab my pen. So if I'm drawing with a pressure sensitive tablet, if I just barely hold down, you're going to get this really small stroke. And the harder I push, the harder that stroke's going to be. Now you see that this is dot, 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 and that makes sense. So I'm just going to very lightly push down on my tablet. That makes sense because we have our spacing here. So we have, um, we have a circular brush. I'm not sure which one we have selected. And we've just changed the spacing on it. So the more, if we take that up to a thousand percent, if we take it down to zero percent spacing, now when I click and draw with my brush, it's going to be nice and fluid. And the harder I push, the bigger my brush gets. And you'll see the lag in there because we're working on a really, really big brush here. And we'll see if it locks up or if it maintains its circle. So we're working with a huge brush, 6,000 or 5,000 pixels by 5,000 pixels. And that's why it's Photoshop's taking a little bit of that lag time because um, that's a lot of information to be, to draw. Okay. And let's just try that with a black and we'll size our brush down. And I'm going to go ahead and oop, make it harder harder edged brush. So I'm just going to barely click and drag. 
very thin, very lightly. More pressure, more pressure, more pressure. I'm pushing down really hard on it. And then really light, 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 light. To barely dragging across my tablet. So that's what that pin pressure, tablet print pin pressure will do. It'll allow you to kind of get some nice thick and thin lines going just depending on how much pressure you put on it. If you want to do some eyelashes or something, you could use that tablet and just get some really fine lines. All right, let's talk about these brush panels here. And we need to bring up our presets, brush presets. And you'll see in here that we have all kinds of different shapes that we can um, create for our brush. And we can do anything to get these type of shapes. All right, so if I come in here, I can just paint. Once again, I'm using my pressure sensitive tablet so I can paint in these cross hatching lines. I could change my opacity down, so if I went down to a 40%, so I could get some gray values in there. And then you'll see as that opacity overlaps, get some zigzags in there, and once again, barely pushing down on my tablet. Could add some white in there. Okay, and then we will go ahead and um, I'm just going to hit Command A for all, to select all, and I'll go up here and I'll hit File, or sorry, Edit, and I can't define brush preset. That's right, I can't do that because it's 6,000 by 6,000 pixels, and that exceeds our limit, so I have to come up here and get my rectangular marquee. I'll change that to a fixed size up here in the control panel. Change my width and my height to 5,000. Click. And since that's within Photoshop's limit for CS6, it should work. So I'll come over here and hit edit. Define brush preset. And I'll call this uh, Eric 2. And when I do that, and switch over to my brush, you'll see now down here that we have a new brush called Eric 2. Oops. All right, so I'm going to choose that brush now. And there's my brush, and you'll see that it is huge. It's just as we have drawn it. So the keyboard shortcut for sizing that brush is Control Option, drag left. And I'll just paint with it. And there you'll see, there's what that brush looks like. Okay. So once you define your brush, you have all these options. This is where you're going to really customize and refine the way your brush looks. So if I change the spacing on that brush, now you'll see kind of dot, 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 dot because we've changed that spacing. If we drag that spacing together so there isn't much spacing, now when I draw it's going to just kind of look like a blob. So you have to kind of decide how you want that brush to look and how you want it to paint. And you have control over it over here. So I really like that first setting so I'm going to change the spacing about to uh, 50% and then I'm going to drag. And I've got my opacity at 40%, so as I start overlapping, you'll see things getting darker and darker and darker. And then I could change the opacity by tapping the 8 key. 
control option to scale my brush and then just I'll just click a couple of times I'm not dragging I'm just clicking because I just want some of those squiggly lines to appear and then I could actually change to white and give my illustration a little bit of contrast in there alright the other things that we can do over here is we can rotate our brush and squish it so if I want to change the angle of my brush I can squish it right here I can rotate that brush and then you'll kind of see this little preview so now as we paint you'll see we have I'm going to take the size of that down because that's going to get kind of complicated I'm going to take my spacing down a little bit so that it's more continuous and then I'll just paint with it like that so now I kind of have a thick and thin and we can also change the size of it right here so if we want to go really small you'll see how that affects our spacing and everything All right, and then a couple of other things that we have up here that are fun to play with is we can change the shape dynamics of this. So we can change the size jitter of our brush so that um, as we click and drag, it'll go thick, thin, kind of small, large, small, large. And it's just kind of random. And we can decide what the minimum diameter is going to be. So if we want it to be really, really small, go from zero, or we could just say keep everything kind of large, large, large. We can change the angle jitter here. So that gives us an, another look. The roundness jitter. We can come over here and click on scattering and say rather than keep all this in a straight line, I want you to scatter it on the axis we can change the count so that we have a lot puddling up in there so if I paint with that now you'll see it really scattering turn the count down turn the scatter down so I guess the big picture is for this is to really play around with your brushes because you can get some really cool looks on your brush and painting in with opacity helps um, play around with some of these other settings in here these are kind of a start to get you uh, thinking about brushes and playing around with them alright let's say that you wanted to make some variations of this brush we can choose this brush and just click over. If we click over here, you'll see that your um, icon will turn into a little bucket tool, and we'll call this Eric 2 1, maybe. We'll click, and now we have this brush, so then we could come over here into our panel here, and we could change the spacing on that particular brush so this remember we're working on Eric 2 change the size maybe change some of that shape dynamic maybe we don't want so much scattering on this one and there we have a duplicate with a variation on it All right, and we could do that again we could click say OK And we could paint with that brush. Then we could make a selection.
and then we could um, define that as a new brush. So we go edit, define brush preset, and we'll call this Eric 3. All right, so we have created one, two, three, four, five brushes. And we'll see in here that uh, we've got all kinds of variety on these brushes. And then we kind of took and combined and painted with this actual brush and then defined another brush. So we've got these brushes created, and now we want to save them. Makes sense, right? You always kind of want to save them. So how we're going to save them is we're going to click on this little icon down here and it says open preset manager. So when I click on that a whole new window is going to pop up and this allows you to select specific brushes that you want to save. So I'm going to click here and I could command click. So I could command click anywhere in here to select multiple brushes. Or I could just click here and shift click and that will select everything in between there. And then I could go around and command click some particular brushes that I like. So command allows you to select individual ones. Okay. So there's a brush library that I want to generate uh, and load into Photoshop. So I'm going to go ahead and say, um, yeah, out of this I want to save this set. And I'm going to call this uh, Eric uh, Sample 2013. So we'll hit save. And I think I'm done here. So we'll say done. And now, since I've created this brush set for a client, I'm going to go ahead and load this brush preset or this brush library so that we can use it. So I'm going to pull up here and out of this window I'm going to say replace those existing brushes. So we're going to replace brushes and then I'm going to go find that sample that I just did. It's right here. We'll say open and now I have created a set of brushes and opened it and gotten rid of all of my other brushes so it's kind of a clean library here and I could choose these and start painting. Now don't worry you didn't throw away those other brushes you just loaded a new brush library into this window. And If we ever want to get those brushes back all we have to do is click up here in this corner and pull down to um, reset brushes and it'll say replace current brushes with the default brushes. We'll say uh, yes. And now we're going to replace that set of brushes with our default brushes. And remember, we didn't lose them. We didn't lose that library we created. We just replaced them. And if we want that library back, we just come in here and say load brushes. Find that sample. We'll say open. And this time, we went ahead and appended it. We kept our default brushes and we appended it to the bottom of that default brushes. So we're back to where we began. All right. And um, have fun with it. This is a very powerful section within Photoshop to work with. So I think that'll cover brushes for now. And I thank you for watching. I will see you down the road in yet another video tutorial.